Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. We're back again and we're going back to 40k today with Magnus the Red. But before we go any further, a little bit of background for those who don't know the 40k universe. Um, Magnus the Red is the demon primarch of the Thousand Sons Legion. A uh, legion that basically there's a few people who are still sorcerers. And the rest of the army is made up of, well, dust in power armors because of a big spell that one of their... Um, sorcerers cast that went a bit pear shaped um, kept all the sorcerers alive anyone who wasn't a sorcerer their spirits I suppose to a certain extent inhabit the armor now um, so yeah they're one of the top armies in Warhammer 40k and Magnus the Red you see a lot of him on the battlefield if you're playing the tabletop game but enough of that for now it is time to look at the card itself so we're looking at three red and blue for a 4-5 flying demon primarch um, unearthly power Instance of sorcery spells we cast cost one less to cast for each creature we control. And whenever Magus deals red, um, deals damage, we get a 3-3 three, three red spawn creature token. Okay. So the more tokens we have in play, each well, the more to creature tokens we have in play, the more likely we are to be able to cast for instance of sorceries for less. Yeah, right, we can do that. It's fairly fairly simple maybe not but anyway here's what today's deck looks like okay at the beginning we have impulsive pilferer when this comes back after it's been killed off the first time left your treasure token you can encore it which will give you you know up to three token creatures to attack with that turn um, which means all your instances of sorcery that turn will at least cost three less so bear that in mind Brow Chief of Compliance, cuts the cost of our instance sorcery down. The Curious Homunculus, once we get it flipped, um, when we've got three or more sorceries in our graveyard, we get to have the Voracious Reader, which means it has prowess and everything costs one less again. Generous Plunderer, I still like this card in red decks. It's becoming my go-to after the uh, sad banning of Dockside Extortionist. Anyway, um, Generous Plunderer comes in, also does some damage, which is quite nice. Goblin Electromancer cuts the cost of our spells down. And our first token generator is the Rat Catcher Trainee. Yes, it only gives us two black red black black rat creature tokens. But that's still two for three mana, which means that our instance of sorceries get a lot cheaper when Magnus is in play. Sprite Dragon does the whole flying and haste and gets plus one plus one counters when we cast those non-creature spells. Slightly different, it's non-creature spells, so that does help quite a bit. Stormcatcher Mentor also cuts down the cost of our instance of sorceries from Bloomborough. It has haste and prowess, which, mm, yeah, I'll cope with that. Third Path Iconoclast gives us a whole load of creature tokens as we cast on creature spells because the soldiers appear. Wider Goblin is just here to give us an extra treasure to ramp our mana. Likewise, Academy Manufacturer helps us with a bit of food and a few clues so we can keep drawing cards as well as the treasure tokens once we create these things. Krenko Tin Street Kingpin. Yep. Whenever it attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it and then get some number of red 1-1 one, one goblin creature tokens equal to Krenko's power. Even if you just get one attack in with this and you get two goblins, it's really going to help Magnus the Red start casting even more instances of sorceries. Liliana undefeated um, Liliana, sorry, undefeated slick shot. I like this just to have the whole um, plotting of our spells as I resolve our multicolored ones, especially if they're instances of sorceries. The Plundering Barbarian is purely here for either blowing up an artifact we don't like or giving us a treasure token, one or the other. Fassa, God of Sea, means Magnus can't be blocked for two mana. Only reason it's here, we need to get those spawn creature tokens somehow, don't we? And this is the easy way. Vidric, Astral Archmage, obviously if we like Night All Day, it's a lot easier to follow on MTGO than it is anywhere else. And getting our spells to go down by X where it's its power yeah we'll go with that Zorn's here just to chuck around some more treasure tokens as we make them Bria a Riptide Rogue gives all our creatures prowess which is pretty good and then whenever you cast a non-creature spell target creature you control can't be blocked this turn so it gives you a way of punching through for some damage another great target if you cast if you've got Magnus and this in play cast a non-creature Magnus becomes unblockable the other Krenko is also here as well, so just tap and put all those goblin tokens into play, which is why we have a few other goblins in the deck. Maniform Hellkite gives us the dragon illusion tokens to cut the cost of our instance of sorceries down as we cast them. And Mizzet of the Ignis is Magnus. Um, 
yeah, experience counts are hard where we're not having this as the command, I'll be honest. But just if we can get a couple of instances of sorceries out and cut the cost down a little bit while it's in play, I'm happy. Nibblets of the Frost gives us prowess and then casting instances of sorceries lets us tap down people who basically put, for all intents and purposes, put a stun counter on them. Um, Wizards of Thay are also here because when you attack you get the token copies um, so that cuts down your instance of sorcery spells by what four plus the tokens plus the tokens if you've got Magnus in play so potentially seven sounds like a fair play to me and obviously giving you the ability to cast your sorceries as instance ain't gonna hurt Goldspan tokens we know what this does Krenikos, God of the Storms, just to either do Lightning Bolt or get a land card, a draw card. Storm Screelix cuts the um, casting cost of our instant sorceries down and then gets bigger as we cast such things. Ancient Copper Dragons here, purely for the treasure generation if we can get hit in. And finally, Ovika Enigma Goloth. Um, yeah, this is probably as near to a 40k card as you get in the main um, magic setting. War 3, pay 3 life, whenever you cast a non-creature spell you get that many X, 1-1 one, one red Phyrexian Goblin tokens where X is that mana value and they've got haste. Yeah. Okay. Spells. We have 20 of them, which is probably enough for Magnus to be honest. Pongify. Rapid hybridization to take out the big creatures we don't like. The Song of Totanaz is really key in this deck. Um, the amount of 1-1 one, one black creatures, rat creatures you can get with this could be quite silly. And given all our creatures, haste isn't the end of the world either. Strike it rich for a bit of tokens. And then spells that give us goblins. So dragon fodders here. Favuna Friendship gives us a dinosaur and a human. Krenko's Command gives another couple of goblins. Grape Shot just to storm off and finish in theory. Krenko's uh, Mana Drain for a bit of control. Ral's Reinforcements for some more tokens. Um, Blue and red elemental creature tokens this time though, so yeah. Prismari command, couple of damage, loot, draw draw two, loot, discard two, yeah, destroy a target I found. Maybe the treasure it'll push. A pair of goblins is instant speed goblin token creation, and empty the warrens. Once you've got a massive creatures in play, having these all come out and then maybe following it up with a song of Tottenham's isn't the worst plan in the world. Goblin Wizardry gives us Goblin Tokens with Prowess. A bit expensive, but it is an instant, and it does give you two one ones, so I'm not going to complain. Hypothesizzle, draw two, then discard a non-land card, and deal four damage to a creature. Yep, happy. Um, Season of the Bold, I just like this from Bloomborough. Um, exile the top two cards, or whenever you cast, until your next turn, whenever you cast a spell, Season of the Bold deals two damage to up to one target creature. Nice little way of continuously shocking things, but it's probably going to be three tap treasure tokens and a couple of cards exiled, would be my guess. Elemental Eruption is the storm card I dream of casting for a large number, I'm going to be honest. 4-4 four, four red dragon elemental creature tokens with flying and prowess and storm. Yeah, okay, that makes me happy. Minus Desire, the traditional storm card. Brass's Bounty for even more like treasure production. And Call Forth the Tempest. Cascade, Cascade, and Call Forth the Tempest deals to each creature your opponents control equal to the amount of mana value of the damage, I should say. So, pretty good. We have a few artifacts to help us out. Um, ramp in the form of Tantalite, Talisman, Sol Ring, Arcane Signet, one of each of the medallions. Take us there. And then. We also have a few other things. So the boots up here, so it's Lava Spur and Swiftfoot to protect Magnus when we get in. Um, Brotherhood Regalia, I forgot about from Assassin's Creed, and yeah, why not? Um, equipped creature has wall two as an assassin in addition to its other types and can't be blocked. Seems like a really good plan to me, especially since we can equip it to Magnus for one. Yeah, okay, then I'm happy with that. Um, Trailblades of Boots gives our creatures non-basic land walk, so another way that Magnus can get through without having to worry about becoming anything else. Likewise, Whisper Silk Cloak, unblockable and has shroud, really does protect Magnus quite amazingly. The final artifact is Mind Splicer Apparatus. Um, 
we're going to flash it in at the end, well, the end of the turn before we start. Put an oil counter on it to start cutting down the cost of our instants and sorceries there and then. Font of Magic does it for each time we've cast Magnus from the Command Zone. Jace's Sanctum does it always, and then we get to do a bit of scry whenever we cast an instant or sorcery. Arcane Melee is going back to the old school. Instance of Sorceries cost two less to cast, but it's five mana, so it's quite expensive. But to help us get the tokens into play to make things easier, Shark Typhoon makes an appearance because why wouldn't you have that in here? After that, we might be a little bit short on lands. There may be a couple of cards we want to take out. Um, yeah, maybe Font of Magic to go up to 36 lands, but I think we're okay. Um, six islands, eight mountains, and a whole load of red and blue lands all the way through. And strangely, in a red group blue deck we have got field of the dead because if we can hit seven different land types and start making some zombies it just makes magnus even more powerful but that is it for today that is my take on magnus red has been requested um i don't think there's anything missed that i mean keeper secrets could be in here um there's a few other bits and pieces from 40k that could be in here but at the end of the day magnus is a spells deck Yes, my spell count is low. Um, you could cut some of the creatures and go up to 25 quite happy, but I want to play the creatures to make Magnus a little bit more oomphy. Um, and I'll take it from there. But I'm sure there are a lot of cards down below that you can tell me about. I mean, you know, there's no Blasphemous Act, there's no Chain Reaction, there's no Cyclonic Rift for a change. I've left them at home for this deck. Um, yes, they probably should be in there, but I left them at home on purpose just to try out a deck without having them in it um, and try and win through Token Beat that really. But hey, you want to cut some of the cards out and put them in, feel free. But let me know in the comments down below. If you could subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, there should be a link appearing down below. You just press that and that'd be really nice. Um, and if you want to see me play Magnus the Red, I'll be playing a lot on stream at some stage this week. So you can come and check it out then. But for now, thanks for watching today's video. I'll be back tomorrow with one more requested, follower requested card to cover. And um, I hope to see you there. So for now, take care. See you soon. Bye.